Okay. So tonight we are going to be talking a little bit about angels. So if anybody would like to download the slideshow that I'm presenting, um, I posted a link in the chat. I'll also post it at the end. That way you will be able to, if you like any of the sources, you'll be able to go back and look at them later. So I'm going to start off by first asking everybody is, you know, what are angels? So because before we get into the actual, you know, the actual meat, we want to see, I want to see what everybody thinks before we start and see if anybody's thought processes change in the middle. So if anybody has any ideas, okay. think when they think of an angel, shout it out. Like, what do you think? Messengers. We're all starting together. Okay. They are messengers of God. Messengers of God. Very good. What else? Uh, uh, they're the people that visited Avram. People who visited Avram. Very good. Okay, so 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 let's so so okay, so that's a little bit. So we know you know they're messengers of God. Yeah, but is that really all they are? And also, you know, what else do they do? Also, are they physical or are they not physical? Or like what do they look like? Right. So everybody probably has some image in their in their head. So keep that image in mind, and then we're gonna. And so and now let's get started. Okay. So here is a here is an article from Time Magazine. Uh, from I, this article is not one that I found myself. Um, it was um, um, I I got it from Richard Jeter. Um, this was this came out when I was uh, I believe I was two at the time. So probably was not I did not read it read it when it was uh, first came out. Um, so here it is. So basically, angels among men, right? So the, so angels angels among us. So the question is, you know, what are angels, and are the angels that we commonly see depicted in, it, you know, around around us and you know, by by TV, movies, advertising? Is that really what we want to be thinking when we think of angels? Right? Everybody said what they said before. You know, angels, messengers of God. Right, they visited Avram, but what? But how do we physically view them? So, so anybody, anybody like to like to try reading the, uh, the try try reading this this source and tell and and see if it see if it fits or breaks with what you what you had in your head before. Just for somebody to read the first the the uh, the the, the, fir the first two lines. Anybody? I'll take over the rest. Yeah, I'll read. Glancing around the gift shops, one might imagine that the role is purely decorative. Holiday angels are luscious creatures, plump and dimpled, all ruffled and improvised. In their tame placidity, they bear no relation to the fearsome creatures in the Bible and the poetry of Rainer Maria Rilke and Wallace Stevens. Right? So. Right, remember we were all thinking of before? So there's a huge gap between what we were all thinking and like when we read, when we read, you know, so when we read the Torah, when we read Tanakh, when we're, when we're trying to imagine what it means for God to have messengers versus what society is telling us. They're two very different things. And those people saying, ah, but I remember I, I saw the Noah movie and it's like, well, those angels were super weird. So I'm not sure if those are better or worse. But they definitely were not remotely what I was thinking of. And they also definitely, they were more horror monsters than they were angels, <laughs> in my opinion. Right? So then, like, right, so what are they? Right? So here, right, people like thinking of, the, you know, so so let's, let me give some examples of <laughs> what angels are. have looked like. I'll, we're going to be showing some paintings. These are, the, um, if you recognize the paintings, you get bonus points. Um, but let's, let, let, let's see. Uh, so let's go through, let's go through some. So which one is the one that we would be of the three presented here? Which one is the most egregious violation? Would you say of the of, of, against what you would think an angel would look like? Which one is the farthest? Or which one's the best the, a potential option? Which one's the best? Right. The middle one. The middle one. Right. You like the middle one the best, or is it the worst? I I think that that it appeals to the concept Hamala Hagoelotimi Kora, 
and the concept of the malachim being around you when you go to sleep at night, that you summon each of them by name, that concept of a guardian angel that was there in that first slide. I think that's, if I believe in angels at all, I'd like to believe in that kind of an angel. Right, so you'd like that, that kind. Okay, right, so Hamal HaGuality, good, right? From Yaakov's blessing. So that, that we say, that you know, that we say every night, that, that could be that one. How about the one on the left? Does that one seem like an angel to anybody? No. 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 Cherub. It's like, those are babies. It's more like a cherub. Right, it's a cherub, but is in, right, so is in, but is that, is that an angel or is that something else? Right, are cherubs angels? Good question. Well, well, Doesn't Jacob fight? On top, on top of the Aaron Kodesh uh, angels? Well, well that, that's much or us or is a separate question. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. You, meant, you meant in the biblical Aaron. Yes, those could be. So th that is a question of what they looked like. Whether they were whether they were babies or not babies, it's it's a it's a good question. What exactly they looked like? But they did. But well, that must least, be. But, but but none of but none of these are the actual descriptions that it said that it talks about actually in my in my Hav Torah where it says that all angels have six wings. Right, about, uh, correct. We're gonna get to it, right? So this seemingly goes again, like so. So this is one version, right? These are all by these are by Renaissance painters. Um, the the um. All, the, whole, the whole slew of these. So most of these were, and right, and then on the right, nobody. I see nobody liked uh, the archangel uh, Michael. Nobody liked that one. It looks good to me. I did. Okay. <laughs> right. So that's like a very different angel. That's not like the helpful, kind. That's like you know, God's wrath through an angel. Like if you were going to think of you know, who would be the angel who was the one who was busy slaughtering the Egyptians this week? This one. Uh, was that uh, Uriel? Could be right. I mean, but it, well, who, who that it is? But it wouldn't be. It's not one of those angels that looks all smiley and going to give you a hug. That's definitely not the angel you want. But is he, are, are any of the, are, are angels any, are what? angels supposed to be genderless? We're going to get to that, right? So you know, right? Notice nobody was bothered by the gender yet, but you pointed that out. So we're going to get there. The Rambam's going to going to address, you know, can oh. it be gendered or not? Okay. But wait a minute. It depends on the, on the prophecies. What, yes. What, why do we think that angels are, are nice? Also a good question. Why, why do you, they're why? nice? Are, no, are no I'm asking what you said. Oh, something. Good question. Yeah, antibiotic there. Thank you. All right. Are they good or are they evil? Right? That's a good question. Right? What are, right? Right? Because we always think, oh, they're good angels, oh. but is God, but is, does God only send the angels for, for positive purposes or for other things too? So, well, and then what? Is it peace? Yes. If it's a messenger, but, then it means it'll do whatever God wants. It could be correct. good, it could be bad. It's not because they are intrinsically good or bad. It's they're just yeah. filling out their purpose. Right. God. So, can God want something bad? Well, we didn't say they're bad, yes. but. Why not? Yes. Yeah, but angels. A angels destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, so they were... right. So that is destruction, but is that a bad thing? No, I think they always seem to be jealous. They're always trying to put down human beings and telling God how they should have play the upper hand. <laughs> so that that so that is in the mid. Oh, we're also going to get to that. Differentiate between different time periods of angel stories. That's going to get me fun, also. Okay, so we're going to try and narrow down to what. It, look, it was in the biblical account. By biblical account, I'm kind of putting Daniel in a separate category. Like Daniel and Eov, I'm going to put those aside because those are a very different version of how, of, of, is to some degree, of how the angels work. Okay, for, for, for instance, we've no, noted there's some, you notice there may have been some names on, the, on, the, on these angels that have been thrown out, right? So, in the, so, in, Everywhere except for Sefer Daniel, there are and Eo, there are no names for the angels, right? They're all simply called Malach Hashem, right? Angel of God, uh, they, they, well, oh, right? Malach Hashem, angel of God, messenger of God. We'll we'll get more to precise definition of the terms in a little bit. But the question is, you know, what are they? Still, and in fact, one of another picture I'd like to show everybody is, how about these angels? Right, I believe uh, Moshe mentioned earlier about the angels who visited Avram. So here is a painting of the right by 
I'm not going to try pronouncing his name. Ludov Lud I'll try. Ludov Ludovico Caracci, um, right? Good Renaissance painter depicting how it looked when Avram was, was greeting the angels. So here, do these does, are these angels in the picture? No, they're human. They're, they're human, humans. right? Well, yeah. like, what's, what's going on here, right? There's nothing indicating they're anything different from a human being. So, so what is it? Right. Right. So, right. So that, that's my wife, right? So Avram thought that they were, thought that they were thought they were humans. So of course they have to look like they're humans. So like, so what is it? Yeah. Human form. Okay, but maybe they human form, right? They could just take on any form. They could take on any form. So now, so let's so let so let's 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 run through some examples here. So are angels always the same, right? Do they always look the same? Right. So one question is in Tanakh, do angels all look the same? What do we think? Clearly not. Right. We already have or, examples. Anyway. Not. Okay, but how could we? Where the painter interpreted the um, the angels to look like people. Just because he interpreted to look like people, it doesn't mean they really looked like people. It just means that that's his interpretation of how the, the angels look. As easy as for, under, to us, for us to understand when whoever's coming to us looks like us, as opposed to like when you're looking at, let's say Star Trek, and the people come, you know, the beings that come to you look all like strange and weird. You're like, oh no, I can't you know, deal with that person. But when somebody, somebody looks so like humanoid. you, but the three Anashim who come to Abraham are described as human, human form. They, they wash their feet. They, he served them food. So, so that's how they appeared. Right. So yeah. good. Right. So but which can, one is it? Right. We're, 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 you know, looking kind of confused here. Like, which one is it? But can you imagine if they appeared as the way the Renaissance uh, artists d d depict them? I think that Abraham would have been scared out of his wits, but if they came to him as human beings, he would accept them and and treat them as such. Right. If they came as humans, they would get better reception. Yes. Is there also maybe a difference, forgive me for my ignorance, between Cherubim and Melachim? So maybe Melachim, I don't know, can come in, in a human form that we can understand or relate to. And Cherubim are for different purpose. I don't know. <laughs> right. There could be different types of angels also. Excellent point. Highly possible. Right? So these are all things that we're gonna have to that we're gonna have to get into, right? So which so okay, so so we've mentioned a lot of things so far. So now let's try let's try and ground ourselves in a source a little bit to see hopefully that'll help us move a little move a move a little move a little bit forward. Okay. So now let, let's Let's, let's focus in on the name. Okay, so what does malach or angel mean? So go for it. What, what do you think a malach is? Messenger. A messenger. Okay, what else? That's it? Okay, how about this? What, are the, what, what, will, be the, what will be the root is word? It, is it perhaps related to uh, worker? Excellent. Related to work, malacha, very Full good. Filler. Right, Full so is filler it, from Malay, or maybe from filler from Malay, right? So which one is it? So our, in, the answer in, is in, in a story right? with the malach that comes to Manoach and his wife, he's referred to it partly as an ish elokim ba elayu marehu kamarem malach elokim nora meod. So an Ish Elohim and a Malach Elohim, sort of hand in hand. Right. So in that, so from there, it appears initially they thought he was a man of God. Well, she might have been a little bit more um, meaning she thinks knowledgeable that, than he was. Right. But isn't they both in the story of Shimshon and his parent, uh, Shimshon's parents? So they initially view him as being a human. They think he's a, a a man of God, a prophet, but they don't think that he's in fact mm -hmm. divine. Only at the very end of uh, at the end of the of the initial encounter, when the, when they offer the the offering, do they do they think that? But we still have the issue that it's, they always start out looking like they're human beings, 
and then all of a sudden there's something else entirely. So, but is that does that always happen or not? So we'll we'll get there. We'll have some in some some stories. We'll see that that's not necessarily the case. The angel that comes and tells Abraham to desist from the Akedah, do we actually see a form there or just hear a voice? Uh, we, we, we hear a voice in that, in that instance with no description of form. So, so sometimes an angel doesn't have a physical manifestation, a visual, a tangible physical manifestation, except for the voice. That's a, it's, a, it's a complicated mess is the answer. Sometimes the question is, is it whether an angel's physical or spiritual, whether they can they can they they can make they can have anything perceived in this wor in this world is also subject to debate. We'll also get into. So these are all very good very good points. We're hope we're gonna we're gonna get there. Okay, but now we we still we're still, we still haven't finished off the name yet. So again, so the name right Malach the, the root is Lamed Aleph Chav, which is seen in the word Malacha, meaning task or work. So they are not only they're, they're not simply messengers meant to convey a message. They're also more than that. They also have set actions to be done. Because if they're just you know messenger, then the only job, then the only thing that they could do would be they come, they say, and they leave. But we see that angels do a lot more than just say words. They, we see them doing actions as well, right? So I mean, so the, the they do work malacha. So they're not purely purely there in the in, in the message sense they're also doing other things too so the other the question is how about angel anybody anybody here uh you know got um very got very good uh greek or latin skills by any chance it's okay don't worry i don't i don't either i cheated and i looked it up okay sounds great to me yes okay so for those so then the answer is the word the word angel this is from Wikipedia, quoting many, again, this is just because that's the source that, that, that I had available. Um, uh, if, you, if you want more, more rigorous linguistics, you, you're welcome to look it up more. But that the angel derives from the Latin word angelus, right, which literally means messenger. So seemingly the view of the, of whoever, trans, of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the translators of the Septuagint, right, I mean, when the, um, thought that messenger was a more apt description. And it's similar to the, the late Greek, Angelos. So I, I, they appear, I think they may have made it typo. Yeah, that's a typo in Wikipedia. That's, that's two news. There's no, they missed, that's not a gamma. Anyways. Um, okay, my bad. I, I should have spell checked Wikipedia first. Oh, well, anyways. Um, okay, so that is angel, right? So angel has a different connotation than, than Malach. Right, so even though nowadays we refer to them as being, we, in English we see the word angels, but that's not necessarily the best translation of the term malach. This is before we can get to the fact that there's many different types of angels um, and, and, a, and a hierarchy within them, which we, we will not be discussing at length because honestly, I don't understand what on earth is going on with that. So we're gonna try, we're gonna be sticking primarily to, as I mentioned before, to biblical accounts, okay? So now the next, so now the next source, uh, we, we have is we, we mentioned earlier about some cases with a physical with the, with the the physical appearance of the angel being like that of a man but I'd like to, to go back to two weeks ago's Parsha when we see Moshe's first interaction with an angel okay so this is just a couple of the verses okay so we are in the we are in the, we are in the, we are in the third chapter of Sefer Shmon in the book of Exodus so now the question is so now, we're, so now we're, we're looking at, at the description. We're going to be going through the English, the Hebrews there as well. Um, again, English will just be for ease of time as well as for understandability for everybody, everybody present. Okay, so who, who, would, like, who would like to read the uh, Moshe's interaction with an angel? I see Moshe raised his hand. Sorry, Michael raised his hand. Michael, Gabriel, and Gabriel. <laughs> All right, now Moses was keeping uh, the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the farthest end of the wilderness and came to the mountain of God unto Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. 
And Moses said, I will turn aside now and see his great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him into the midst and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Here am I. And he did uh, and he did, said, draw not uh, nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Okay. So, based on this, what form is the angel taking? Fire. Fire, right? Not a man at all. It's it's a burning bush. The fire on the burning bush. So what, what else is interesting here? How about Moshe's reaction? What's his initial reaction? Hey, look. At his face. Right? He says to look. He wants to look. And see. To look. Right? He wants to look initially. And then what happens when he realizes who he's talking to? Then what does he do? Hide. Right? And then he hides. So we see this a lot of times with interactions with angels. People don't realize what they're looking at to begin with. They don't realize they're interacting with the divine at all. They assume that, you know, it's, I don't know, something strange, but not necessarily divine. So that's always the question, you know, which, what is it? Is it, is it miraculous or is it normal? And honestly, sometimes it's very confusing. But could it be that the the job of that angel was to literally create a smoke screen, like so that God couldn't be seen? You know, like it's a distraction almost. And when um, Moses didn't respect that as an act of God, he had to be told, "This is me, God," and so he turned away. All right, that is a possibility. Uh, I, yeah, no? be that that's what happens there, but I'm not. Right. It could be that he, that, that he's to distract from the press, right? So it's really that God is there, but all the, but, but instead the angel is trying to distract most from looking at God. Could be. So I would also like, like to, um, okay. So that, so that's the beginning of that story, right? So that, that, so we're going to, we're going to leave that story there because the rest of the story involves Moshe talking directly to God. So the question then is, well, where'd the angel go? Any suggestions? What happened to the angel? The angel's there, still there. He's the voice of God. So the angel is a conduit. Yes. Okay. And therefore, he never leaves. Definitely possible. Yeah, he, he's still there. Right. The angel doesn't go anywhere, right? Right? Because he's still, in order for the communication to work, the angel needs to be there. That's a possibility. What's the other option? Is that, um, who mentioned the smoke screen before? That was... Not I. Sandy. 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 I, I, right. So it's a good question, right? Is is the angel an essential part of this direction, or is it just, or is he just happen to be there? So, also good point. Not not entirely certain. Okay. Because both ways will work. Okay. So now now we're going to look at another another case. Next case is what did the angels look like in their purest form? So this is. This is from the beginning of, of the book of Yechezkel, first chapter of Ezekiel, also known in Hebrew as Maisei Merkaba. Um, in Hebrew or in English, you know, the heavenly chariot. So it's actually it prohibited to, to learn this properly, but don't worry, I am very confused, so it's okay for us to read this. Okay, I'm giving everybody the English translation simply because most of the Hebrew words, most people have no idea what they mean anyways, so... And there are some great debates. So we'll go with the English version, and then you know, hopefully, we'll give us some degree of another potential way of view of view of, of viewing angels. Right. So far, we've seen angels as men, and we have seen angels as fire. So let's see what this one is. So who 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 would like to uh, risk being burnt by the heavenly flames? Yes, please. The word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chebar, and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. And I looked, and behold, a stormy wind came out of the north, a great cloud, with a fire flashing up, so that a brightness was round about it. And out of the midst thereof, 
as the color of electrum out of the midst of the fire, and out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man, and every one had four faces, and every one of them had four wings, and their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass, and they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides, and as for the faces and wings of them, four. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went everyone straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, they had the face of a man, and they, and they four had the face of a lion on the right side, and the four had the face of an ox on the left side. They four had also the face of an eagle. Thus were their faces and their wings were stretched upwards. Two wings of every one were joined one to another and two covered their bodies. And they went every one straight forward whither the spirit was to go. They went, they turned not when they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like coals of fire burning like the appearance of torches. It flashed up and down among the living creatures and there was brightness to the fire. And out of the fire, I'm sorry, I can't go down. Oh, it's... Oh boy, I've really messed it up. Oh, my bad, one second. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll read the last lines, okay. And it, and it flashed up and down among the living creatures and there was brightness to the fire and out of the fire went forth lightning. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Thank you very much, Norman, for reading. So what on earth did we just read? Sounds like a monster. Right, it sounds like a monster. How many heads does it have? Four. Four heads. Combination of man, beast, reptile, like like bird, just like what? And wings oh. everywhere, right? Isn't it? Isn't this the chariot that they talk about in the Gomorrah Chagiga? They do. In the Gomorrah Chagiga, they talk about different times of, of God or um, representing himself as well as of angels representing um, uh, um, coming forth. And, so, and, uh, don't, and, don't, and don't we conclude from that Gomorrah that this was the chariot that was, saw, that was seen at Mount and Torah? The Gomorrah does say that. We are going to be staying okay. in the realm of the, of, of, of the biblical text. We are going to be leaving the uh, Gomorrah where it stands for now because otherwise we will... Okay. Lot, otherwise, we'll, we'll, we'll get very far off track, right? So in, from here, right, it's very much not something that we can comprehend, right? This is also only no. part of it. I left off the description of there being angels making up the rest of the chariots, wheels, and the wagon. I just left to just the singular standard angel that we see flashing around. I mean, say flashing around, I mean flashing around like bolts of lightning, which is like also super strange. Does it, it when it moves, it just goes, and then then it appears. And it's made of fire, a lot of different colors. You're not, as you, as you probably can't even think of a of a somebody who made any paintings of this that even like do it remote justice. And if, you, and if somebody did, well, odds are they'd be blaspheming both the church and Judaism um, all at the same time. And doesn't it mention later on that the the angels were wheels within wheels, and this is what drove the chariot. It does mention that later, correct? Uh, how 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 the chair how God's chariot is powered by angel power? It does mention that also. Is what 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 with what that means? I, I don't really know what that means. So, so before I forget, um, if you if you'd like to be sent the um, notifications for the upcoming for the upcoming parts of the series again, it's all on, on the flyer. If you'd like you know, to be uh, be notified about them, just please um, send me a. Um, just message me in the chat and, I'll, and then I'll have your, with your, with your name, your email. And that way I'll make sure that you'll be able to uh, be reminded of it and have any source of material um, ready in case you want to print it out prior. But again, it'll most likely be with PowerPoints like this one because there's a lot of visual aids that are necessary. So, but again, some people like printing things out, that way you'll be able to have it beforehand. Okay, so just feel free to message me with your, uh, with your, with your name and email. So that way I, I can uh, 
sent to you in advance. Okay. Right. So that is the Maya Merkava. Again, I don't understand it. The commentary is also have very a lot of things to say about it. Many of some of which make sense, some of which are beyond me. But we see that this is very different from what we've seen until now. Right. What we saw until now was within the realm of our understanding. Like it seems, you know, pretty straightforward. Oh, it looks like a human being. Oh, it's just fire. And now it's like, wait, what? Right? An entirely an entire shift in our way in our way of perceiving perceiving at the very least the image of an angel. Okay, so now let me I'm gonna list some of the stories involving angels and 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 just so that we so we can see the some of some of the range. Okay, so again, here are 12 different um, 12 different ones. We have mentioned a lot of them already. But also I would like to point out that if you look through the list, you'll see how it's not unique to Jews kind of having these interactions. The interactions with angels also occur with other groups as well. We see the angel interaction with Lot. We see them interaction with, with Bilam. We see them interacting with the army of Sennacherib of the, of the, the Syrian empire. So there's a lot of different times the angels come up. So the question is, when they come up, is, well, what does that mean that an angel appears? So to that, we have a little bit from the, the Rambam's guide to, to the perplexed, our guide of the perplexed, depends on your translation, right? Is it for the perplexed or is he himself the, the guide of the one who happens to be perplexed already? Um, I'll, leave that, I'll leave that to the, that, that's an argument for uh, some more of the, more, more of the linguists. So the question is, when we say the angels showed up, did they really show up or not? So now we're going to try and read the Ram, the Maimonides, the Rambam's interpretation of what angels are. Okay, so I'll, I'll read this one because this one's a little, um, a little uh, hard, harder to chew on. So the angels are likewise incorporeal. I mean, they have no physical form. They are intelligences without matter. But they're nevertheless created beings, and God created them, as will be explained below. In Breshit Rabbah, we read the following remark of our sages. The angel is called the flame of the sword, which turned every way, um, at the, guarding the, guarding the uh, Garden of Eden. And according to the words, his ministers are a flaming fire. Psalms. The tribute which turned every way is added because angels are changeable in form. They appear at one time as males, at other times as females. Now as spirits, now as angels. By this remark, they, cl they clearly stated that angels are incorporeal and have no permanent bodily form independent of the mind of him who perceives them. They exist entirely in prophetic vision and depend on the, on the action of the imaginative power, as will be explained when speaking on the true meaning of prophecy. As to the words at another time as females, which implies that the prophet and prophetical vision perceived angels also in the form of women, they refer to the vision of Zechariah, and behold, there came out two women, and the wind was in their wings. So, this is so so based based on this. What what would we what would we say about, about about angels? Can we ever see them? Yes. They seem to be tied to prophecy in this explanation. Yes. Does that explain why we don't see them anymore? Just as prophecy ended our ability to see angels or their existence ended? So, inter interesting point, but the, we'll, we'll, um, the okay. Rambam doesn't think that, that angels were ever seen. So we'll get to, the, uh, we'll get, we'll get to in a little bit. I Rambam think that thinks that they were never meant to be perceived by human eyes. Because he says, the Rambam says that de it depends on the action of the imaginative power. And they exist entirely in prophetic vision, which suggests they're occurring only in the mind of the person who's perceiving them, in their mind. Correct. And, and, and not outside of their mind. Excellent, Mark. Right. They're not physically there. They're only, they have no physical form. And if you perceive them as having physical form, you're not actually, you're not actually seeing their physical form. It's something it's else. It's a hallucination then? It's, yeah. It's, it's your interpretation of the spiritual. But is it there? No. According to the Rambam, it is not, which we'll get to in just a moment. According to the Rambam, it is impossible for an angel to be physically perceived because they have no physical bodies. So, so if we go to the next uh, here. This is another one of the Rambam. 
Okay. So this is the Rambam, the Mishnah Torah, right? So this is his, his halachic work. So in there, he has so as part of his, his halachic work, right? Which is man, which is laws for the, for the common man. He also has a little bit of flaw of flaws to boil down in it. And here he's talking mentioning about how angel, angel, oh, angels and how they're created. And he says, somebody would like to read the one. This one's a little, a little clearer than the previous one. For the angels are not only are not material bodies, but only forms distinguished from each other. What then is meant when the prophets say that they saw an angel of fire possessing wings? Such descriptions are to be understood as prophetic visions and are to be taken in an allegorical form. They are meant to indicate that the angel is not corporeal and has no gravity like bodies which have weight. Okay. That's, so, a, hard, that's a very difficult one. Because he talks about allegorical. Correct. So the word is also, don't we'll just compare it to the Hebrew word. It's in the, so that word is, yeah, mashal. Yeah, that, that, it's a parable. Right. So, right. So he's saying that there is, there is no, there is no way for there to be physical form. He's categorically saying that there, any physical form can't be for angels. Then how can the, how can the Aton of Bilam see an angel? He doesn't have a brain to have a hallucination like a human being or a prophetic vision. It sounds like he's an animal and he saw something. Right. So it's not based on the necessarily based on the on, on the brain. It's based on the it's the question of the human being's percep, perception of the spiritual plane, according to the Rambam. And Is an animal an can perceive an angel too? So according to the whole era? that it's all According to the according to Bilam's perception of what occurred, right. so <laughs> it's it's actually in so is it, so is in, it's according to his spiritual perception. So how did Abraham wash their feet? Good question, right? So that's that, that's the question that 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 that, that, that Nachmanides Ramban is about to ask, right? Based on what we just just saw the Rabbi saying that they're entirely incorporeal, like can of physical form, any interaction where an angel is, it means that it's already, if you see the word angel, that means this has to be a prophecy. So that is a very different conception than what most of the most of, of, of our of our sages thought, as the Ram, as, as we'll see Ramban talk about in just a moment. But again, so the, that's the Ramam doesn't believe in angels, right? That's something that people, some people often, often, often think that Ramam thinks that angels don't exist. It's not that they don't exist, just that your interaction with them can't happen on this plane of existence, right? It's the intersection between the, between the spiritual and the and the physical planes can't happen according to the Rambam, except through, by means of prophecy. So in order, so if you are perceiving it, you must come be in a prophetic mode. It can't act. Angels can't actually act on the world. He called them in the previous. Uh, passage that you had, he called them intelligences. Yes, which so that, is a Greek philosophical concept. Correct. It's based on on, on Aristotle. So yeah. That's why. The, the, so the, right. So that's why the, we. Um, forgive me for not knowing the original Greek on that one. Um, but as in, he uses the, the Arabic tra tra the tra Arabic translation term. Um, but because again, the the guide of the perplex was originally written in Judeo Arabic. Meaning written in Arabic with Hebrew characters, so um, I, I went with English translation because my Arab, my Judeo Arabic is non-existent. So, uh, okay. yeah. So you're right. He says so. He's using the terminology of 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 Aristotle okay. to describe it, and that and his conclusion is that there is no they have no physical form whatsoever. That's that's that is the that is somewhere where the where where, where Maimonides argues with Aristotle on that point. But we, we, I was, I, I skipped over the whole point where he point. The, he has another section where he discusses why Aristotle's wrong in the second section of the of the guide, um, which again, I, if you if you like to see more about that, where he argues against the Aristotelian theory of how the intelligences work, um, uh, please see there. Okay. Do we take Rambam's view as angels as our definitive Jewish view, or just an opinion? An opinion. There are many opinions um, in regards to angels, but we're, we're going to focus on two. So we're not, we, we just discussed that of the 
that of the Rambam. Now we're going to go to the more the more standard opinion, meaning that of Rashi, followed by that of, of Nachmanides, of Ramban. Okay? So we're going to focus now in on the story of, of Avraham and when he's visited by the men. Okay? So if you look at the verses, you'll notice that well, the word that is that is not present in this chapter relating to these men is they're referred to as what? Anashim. Anashim. They're referred to as men. They are never referred to in the section as angels. angels. Malachim. That doesn't that, however, next chapter when they go over to load, then they all of a sudden are being called as, a, as if they are angels. So that's a, again why the transition, not for now. But again, the standard interpretation of this is that they are perceived, they look like they're men, but they're really angels. That's the standard. Uh, Chazal, uh, opinion in uh, amongst the rabbis brought down in the Gemara, the Midrash, um, and quoted by Rashi or Shlomi uh, Skaki. So here we go. So here, so now we're going to go through as 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 in, in Ramban Nachmanides' summary of, of of the concept. So we're going to go through this Ramban, and hopefully it'll also enlighten us as to whether or not I'm going to been asked about like can, you know. Can we still see angels or not? So then according to the Rambam, the answer is, well, nobody ever saw angels. So now it's no different now than it used to be. But that's not necessarily the case according to everybody. So here, so, so this is, um, so now we're, now we're going to, now first we have the quotation of Rashi for interpreting this section. Um, can I can I call on um, Raphael to, I believe I saw Raphael as one of the names in the uh, in the group. Could, could, could somebody, Raphael, please, uh, please, please read this section. All righty. Um... Uh, and he appeared to him uh, the language of Rashi to visit the sick man. Rabbi Chama, the son of uh, Rabbi Chama, the uh, Barchanina, said it was the third day after his uh, uh, after his uh, uh, circumcision, and the whole and the Holy One, blessed be He, came and inquired about the state of his health. And behold, three men came. The angels that came to him with the appearance of men were three: one to announce uh, to Sarah the birth of a son, one to cure Abraham. I went to overthrow Sodom, and Raphael, who healed Abraham, went from them to save Lot, as this is not two assignments, because it was a different place, and he was commanded afterwards, or because they are both about saving, and therefore really one. And they ate, they appeared to be eating. Okay, so there's a lot of points mentioned here. One we see is that, well, these men are all definitely angels. We see, we, we see mention of the fact that a given angel is given one task at a time. We are given some names, and we also see that they have some physical features they can't do, like they can't eat. So even if angels are perceived, so the, the, the most normative view is that even though if angels appear to be human, they can't really be fully human, right? They can, they can make a good show of it, but there's always something that's not quite there. Okay, so this is, you know, the end of Rashi, you know, the Gemara, pretty standard. But then we have the opinion of, of, of Maimonides, quoted by, with the Ramban also quotes. So who, who'd like, so who'd like to read this one? It's different from before. Okay, I'll read it. Thank you. And in the book guide for the perplexed, it is said that the section is presented in the style of the general followed by the details. The verse first states that God appeared to him in prophetic visions. And then how this prophetic vision was that he lifted up his eyes in the vision and behold, three men were standing upon him. And he said, if I found favor in your eyes, this is the recounting of what he said, in the prophetic vision to one of them, to the greatest one of them. And in the vision, the only thing that appeared was just three men eating meat. How could it state? And God appeared to him. As behold, God did not appear to him, not in a vision and not in a thought. And it is not found, found like this in all of the prophecies. And behold, according to his word, Sarah did, Sarah did not knead cakes. And Avram did not fix the young cow. And also Sarah did not laugh. Rather, everything was a vision. And if so, this dream came with much detail like the false dreams. As what is the point in showing him all of this? Okay. So now we're seeing that this is so the, we, when we're seeing this with the with the Rambam, so it's very right. So again, towards the end there, that was some of the Nachmanides commentary of the extensions of of Rambam's opinion. That wait, so if this is all all prophecy, that means that none of this really ever happened, right? Who had the vision? Who had the vision? So Avram had the vision. 
What about Sara? Did if Sarah, Abraham was already told previously he'd have a son. If they came to tell Sara that they were going to have a son, wouldn't she have been the one having the vision? Agreed. Right. These are all reasons why Ramban is, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's fit to be tied because he's like, how can you say that none of these things happen? But the whole story makes no sense if it if it did if it's just a prophecy like the old the order and everything it's like then how what why is this necessary and why all this detail wasn't still telling us so you would say that well the answer is that's all a prophecy and he understood it all from the prophecy but most many people are not satisfied with that version with that of the Rambam because they're like it really looks like it and sounds like it really happened physically. So to say there's no physical side of things just is impossible. So let's let's continue on. So now we'll continue on with you know the Nachmanides attack. So now we're going to show other examples of stories that if you follow the that that are similarly bro- similarly break down once you are are following the opinion of the Rambam. So, and the guy there also said about the matter, and a man wrestled with him, right? That's with, with, with Yaakov wrestling with the angel, that this was all prophetic vision. And if so, I don't know why he limped on his thigh when he woke up. And why he said, for I have seen God face to face and he saved my soul. As the prophets did not fear that they would die because of prophetic visions. He already saw a greater, more glorious vision than this, right? As Miriam mentioned, right? That um, he saw many times in prophetic visions as well. You see, um, and you, you know, we'll continue to see them. And behold, according to his opinion, this would require to say that in the matter that Lot, that angels did not come to his house and did not make them maso, and that they ate and they ate them. Rather, the whole thing is a vision. But that how were the evil and sinful people of Sodom prophets? As otherwise, who told them that the people came to his house? And if it was all prophetic vision, then the angels pressed, etc., and take up and get your wife, wife, and he escaped with your life. And behold, it lifted up your face. The whole section would be a vision. That means that there was no stone. Nothing ever, nothing ever, nothing ever happened. And Lot would have stayed in stone. And Rama would think that the acts would have been done on their own. And the statements in each and everything were a vision. And these things contradict scripture. It's forbidden to hear them and even to believe them. Okay, so then be very much fighting words. So what, so basically... Uh, Ramban is turning to the Rambam, right? Nachmanides is turning to Maimonides and saying, if what you say is true, you clearly don't believe in scripture being true because you are upending so many different sections that it just can't be. So what, 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 before we see the, 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 you know, the Ramban's way of reading it, what are ways we could defend Maimonides? Well, in some things, for example, you you go through an experience in a dream, wake up, and can act on that experience. So, he, so Jacob could be uh, limping. Right. Um, <laughs> correct. That is that is what Barbara Nell says. Right. Psychosomatic. Right. Is in that mm-hmm. you 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 can turn your dreams into reality if you believe in them. Right. Right, and that and that's what but happened. The destruction of the destruction of the city, the destruction no, of the, the city. No, the first, right. the first just the, just the limping. Right, right. That, that right. doesn't fit with the second part. Right, the destruction of the city is a harder one to explain. I mean, right? and, so, and Abraham sees the the esh and the kitor from a distance. I mean, it happened. Right. So the question is, is let's say, what is the role of the angels in this happening? Is other question. Right, as in, so a, w- a way to defend the problem is that the angels' involvement could not have been physically perceived. Was this was stone destroyed? Yes. Who destroyed stone? So if you look at so in the, in the verses themselves, it both says that the angel did it and then that God did it. Right? The angels say we are going to destroy stone. And then in the end, it's God who rains down the fire upon the whole area. So is it Balaam who had the vision in this in this interpretation? Is it Balaam who had this vision of the uh, yes. donkey in the yeah, so it's Bill had the vision, not the not the donkey had the vision. It was that he had, he had a basically he had a vision while on his donkey, and then it turned, which then played out the rest of the story there, and which made him made made him look like a donkey at the end of the story. <laughs> um, I would use more but colorful are, terms, but uh, if if their visions are they implanted in people's brain by God, or are they produced from one's own mind? 
So these are produced by God. This is God's control of the spiritual plane on which the angels exist as God's way of interacting with, um, with the spiritual reality, while at the same time God affects separately the physical reality. That is the way for the Rambam's um, view to work. For me, so, but, Sarah, so Sarah never laughed. But if all these were right. visions, if all these were visions, why doesn't the Torah say, "Hey guys, these were visions, not fact, as we are as it is written here"? I don't believe there were visions. I believe it was actual fact that Abraham actually saw these people. Correct. Right. That's what. Right. I think exactly. it's because so it's easier. Exact issue is. I think it's because it was written this way because it's easier for an average person to believe that it was a man who, who did those things rather than the concept of something happening in Avram's mind or in Yaakov's mind or whatever. Right. It's easier. Right. So the, Torah easier. Is written, the Torah is written in the language of man. Correct. So in order for people to understand it, so things may have actually occurred in the way that the Rambam did, said it, but because the average human being, when they hear that, it, it basically breaks their brain. So we're going to say that, so therefore the words of the Torah are written in a way that would make sense to people. Right. But, but we see other cases where it's just a voice, like when Shmuel, as a young lad, hears the voice in the night three times. It doesn't say that an angel comes and sits on his pillow and talks to him. And we're comfortable with it just that's being much the voice of God. Right, that, right. That, that's, that's, God, right that's God talking to him. That's not an angel interaction in, in, the, in the world at that right. point. So, but we'll, so we'll, right. we'll see. But, but either, either way, why would we not be comfortable with that? So, that, right. So many people are fine with that, but some people aren't comfortable with that con conception. So perhaps it's because the because the uh, the Nevi'im were written a thousand years, fifteen hundred years later, and at the time we're talking about this, uh, that was where pe where people were at in their con in their conceptual abilities, whereas right. at the time the Nevi'im were written. People had progressed in their conceptual abilities. So it, it could be, but a lot of the commentators like to try and have it more unified. So we're gonna so we're gonna see Ramban's interpretation. We'll see, which we'll, we'll touch both on, on, on what Mark says, well, what Miriam said, and, and put them together in a very interesting way. Okay, and this this will be the last source for, uh, for this year, and then we'll then we'll wrap up. Um, and then afterwards, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask them. Just don't want to hold everybody too long. Okay. But now, what is what? So, what is the Ramban's view of angels? So, um, Miriam, would you, could you please read this for us? Um, and in truth, in all places in Scripture where the seeing of an angel or the word of an angel is mentioned, it is in a vision or in a dream, as the senses cannot perceive angels, but not prophetic visions. As one who merely perceives to see an angel or his word is not a prophet, as the matter is not as the teacher defines guide for the perplexed Mishnah Torah foundation of Torah that the prophecy of every prophet besides Moshe, our teacher, was through an angel. And they have already said about Daniel, they are better than he, as they were prophets and he was not a prophet. And so his book was not written together with the books of the prophets because his matter was with the angel Gabriel. And even though he appeared to him and spoke to him in a waking state, as it is stated in the vision of the second temple, and I was still speaking in prayer in the man Gabriel, and so, too, the vision of the final salvation was in the waking state, in, in his um, walking with his fellows alongside the river. And likewise, Hagar, the Egyptian, was not in this category of prophetesses, but is also clear that her matter was not that of a bat kol, uh, a sub head heavenly voice, as the teacher said, God for the perplexed. Okay, so what, so what is, so let, let's, let's organize this a little bit. So according to... Ramban, Nachmanides. What are angels? So, so they are physical beings sent by God that is that are that human beings cannot properly perceive. 
when a human, the reason why we have different descriptions of the angels between, let's say, the, as we saw in Ezekiel, and as we see by many people often mistaking them for being men, even though they're not, because human beings can't properly process the divine, right? The, the, these divine messengers of God, you can't see them, but they're also, they're not the same level as prophecy, right? On the one hand, we have the, the ideal form of prophecy is direct conversation with God. That was reserved for one and only one person. That person was Moshe Rabbeinu. Everybody else, the way they got the messages was by means of a vision delivered to them by an angel. But on the other hand, the, an average human being, it's possible for them to have perceived an angel. And if you did, you, you would have had a very, you may have had a very different experience perhaps can be living contradictory experiences, but it wouldn't be the same thing as, as true prophecy. It's perception of, of God in the physical realm, but not actually to a conversation with God by medium or by either by medium or any other way. And so that's why when we say that and then more people can see angels than can see prophecy and it's a lower level because you're true, you are seeing something that is divine, but it is not seeing God himself, nor is it even the level of prophecy. It's something below that. It's like glimpsing the glimpsing the not even like barely even glimpsing the, the uh coattails. Okay, so that so, so in the end, the angels again, what is their form? They're, the angels have no form, it's limited by our perception, as uh, as as uh, Mar as Mark was as Mark was saying. And since that was the case. So they, they didn't have any, like, by our, so yes, it's limited by our perception, but they certainly do exist. It's just that our limited faculties only can tell part of the story. Um, yes. Okay. Um, but uh, but uh, what is the, what is, uh, what is uh, the Ramban do with the actual description as listed in, uh, in Isaiah chapter six, where, where he actually describes and I and I saw and I uh, where he he says I had this dream, and behold, there were these angels, and this is the and this is the description of these angels. That is how Isaiah viewed them, right? That was, that was Isaiah, and Isaiah and his capabilities. That's how he was able to view them, right? That's how they were perceived by him. As far as which angels they were and how they fit into the general hierarchy of angels, that's a separate topic but one thing that he, that's that's how he perceived them and that and that was the extent to which he could understand the spiritual plane and the spiritual reality that was those angels can you can you make uh, clear what's why he's making this difference between perceiving angels and prophetic vision what's yes because more people see angels than have prophecy in the scripture and so we're differentiating between them because you have because a prophet is greater than somebody simply saw an angel or heard a bot call or you know heard the sub prophetic voice. Okay. So he's different. So and also we see in the you know in the Gemara that it, it lists the prophets that we've had and it and certain people are left off the list. The question is how could they be left off the list? And here is explaining how why certain people are prophets, certain people aren't prophets, even though it seems like they both had interactions with an angel which according to the realm would say that they're equivalent but that doesn't quite work so this is this is the solution that they are they both are divine that both of them have interactions with divine but they're different levels of interaction mm -hmm. okay so now okay so i, I see we're, we're running out of time so i'm going to um again so we're going to going to go to the, the summary slide um okay the summary all right so what do they look like so excellent question um there's a wide range in and um, of what they look like. They could be looking like men. They could be looking like a, like fire. They could be looking like something entirely distinct, as we as is the case in Isaiah or Ezekiel, and and right and that and and whether or not that that you their that's their true their true appearance or not. So pretty much so so most people said that's not their actual appearances. That's simply just the limitations of our perception, whether that be the the, the limitations of our prophecy or limitations of our physical ability to perceive things. As far as how do they work? So they work as agents of God. And the question is between the we, between Nachmanides and Maimonides is whether or not they are, are physical messengers or purely spiritual, right? According to Maimonides, they are purely spiritual. They cannot affect the physical world. According to Nachmanides, they, they, they can't. 
And that's also that's the next one of the physical or the spiritual. So according to according to the Rambam, the Maimonides, they're purely spiritual and therefore can have no effect on the physical. Whereas according to the Ramban, they are both physical and spiritual beings, and therefore they can definitely and do affect both of them. Great. Yes, so feel free to ask questions. For, yeah. For, for those who say that, that they are physical and do something, why not say, but if God is omnipotent, what does he need an angel for? All those things can be done by God himself. What does he need so sub, uh, mini gods helping him out? So they're not mini gods, they're extensions of who of, of God himself. That are they means, just are they just God then? Are they just like is it is there one being that's God? We believe God is one, or do we leave that believe that there are other ethereal beings that are non-physical, just like God is ethereal, non-physical, and that takes away from the oneness of God, does it not? So it's more like so it's more like God is one, and then simply we're when we perceive when we when let's say when God lets us in to see what's what's what he's doing, this is how we perceive and understand it. God is still is one is, is still the one and only. Just when we are when God, let's say, let's say the story involving, let's say any story involving the Satan. So like, so what is, so how is that possible? Like, who is God talking to? The answer is, he's not talking to anybody. It is in order for human beings to understand, you know, the thought process, you need a foil to have a conversation. So let's say, let's say in the book, in the book of Job, right, where we have, you know, all of a sudden the, you know, the wicked, you know, the, the supposed wicked Satan, it's like, he's, he's not wicked, he's simply, he's an angel of God doing his job. And simply, God is letting us in, into you know, into His inner working, so to speak, to teach us how the decision is made. Not that there are separate entities that have any power, because they're really just you know, subparts of God. Just simply that that's the way that for for human beings to be able to conceive, to conceive of and perceive it and make any sense of it, it has to be pre presented in that such a fashion. It still sounds pretty complicated. It is. God is complicated, and I don't pretend I can understand any of it. But that's that, that's my my limited small grasp is that's that's what I've seen. Like we make a huge tonight. Can I get um, Mark? Oh, sorry, Mark Midquist, and then Mark Saffer. We make a huge deal in the seder of pointing out Ani v'lo malach. You know mm. that they're subservient. Can I suggest that we that no one can look at God and live, and so Correct. that if God had to do the angel for us to look at uh we wouldn't be able to tolerate that correct right even even even, even moshe couldn't truly see perceive god um so he, he was able to look at, at least his backside right his back the question what does that mean when he when he viewed the back of god there's also like the you know the 13 attributes of god so then did he did moshe see god or did he simply understand 13 distinct attributes of god but that's not the entirety of who God is. Um, and then, right, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, Mark, Mark, could you repeat your question again? I, I lost train of thought there. I was just making the point, we make a big point at the uh, Seder of right. saying either of Correct, right, so that's based on the, 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 the um, in, in, in Seber Shemot, when at one point God says, I'm going to send an angel before you. And the question is, why is that bad? So, the, so, and we see that Moshe argues and says, no, no, God, we want you to be in the camp. We want you to actually do it yourself, not, not to send your messenger. So there, that's more because it looks like at that point that God is severing his relationship with the Jewish people. It's not just that he's using an angel because that's not a problem that an angel is doing it. The issue is, is that also part of that is that God, that, that, the, the temple will not be in the camp. It'll be outside of the camp. Nobody's allowed to go anywhere near it except for Moshe. And so it's not just that. So, so the angel is saying that God is trying to do is, is trying to, God made a promise to our forefathers to bring us, to bring us, to bring us eventually to Israel, to the promised land where we were then reside. And even though God promised that, he's trying to live in the most minimalist fashion in that, in that way he says, I'm going to send an angel. God's not going to be doing it all himself. Instead, it's going to be through another another medium, which is as far removed as he can get from doing so. 
And that's why it's terrible, because we want our relationship to be as direct with God as we as, as possible. As certain, there are certain physical limitations, but we, we, we want to be as close as we possibly can. And that's why that was so terrible. We say, why, why it would be so terrible if it was just a by an angel? Because it means that God's not really interested in, in our well-being. He just is trying to fulfill his end of the deal. Okay. Any other questions? All right. What, do, what, what should oh. we be telling children about angels? That is a good question. I'm not certain. Um, I would say try and stick to as close to the story as you can without giving any phys any extra physical descriptions, um, and then let them perceive as they as as they desire to perceive the messengers of the the messengers working on behalf of God doing things. Because there's no reason to you know to to you know say to ruin their like a lot of like if you ask a child who's never seen a a picture of an angel to draw an angel, you will get very different responses because and that's good because angels have no set form as as Rambam mentioned and once you and, you and hopefully you know maybe if they do someday see an angel whether that's physically possible or not again that's up for debate between Ramban and Rambam whether that'll ever happen at any point in history but the point being is that you don't want there's no reason why we should limit their imaginations and we should simply read the text as we have them and then let them fill in the blanks Okay, and what should we? Oh, sorry, um, Sandy, raise your hand first, and then then Mark. So I I feel almost embarrassed to ask this, but going then from a very childish perceptive whatever view on Torah, I have great difficulty trying to differentiate what is real that I read and what isn't, and when is it? Because if I don't take everything as it is. Um, with the commentaries too, I suppose, but I, it sort of leads into the people who don't believe, who say, do you really believe Noah was swallowed? No, Noah, sorry. Uh, you. Uh, um, gosh, Jonah was swallowed by a whale. Do you really believe that Abraham saw three people and that they were, or whatever it is, like there's all these things that people use. And so, so they're basically being supported almost by, by Rambam. <laughs> Right. So Rambam, Rambam isn't saying that it didn't happen. He's saying that he, yeah, I would but, argue it's much easier to understand to say that things slightly beyond what we can consider normal occurred is easier to understand for most people than to grasp the differentiation between a physical and a spiritual plane and how on earth they ever interact or don't interact. But so when you start saying it in that level, then you're thinking, okay, what's to say that the hallucination, it wasn't the hallucination you know, um, brought upon by various herbs and spices or, or incense or whatever else was taken then. That's where you start to become a little bit, sorry. Right, I'm, so, I'm, so, so, we be, right. so we believe that these stories actually occurred. The Rambam does too, just his perception of reality is different than that of the Ramban. So the Ramban would, would be the one that most people when they picture, you know, these events really happened. They perceive it most similarly to the Ramban. Like, may, like what they look like exactly, were they like men or not? I don't know, but they definitely, these events definitely occurred. So it's the way that Ramban is much more complicated and much harder to swallow for almost anybody, which is why the Ramban said that trying to mention them or speak about them is often detrimental to one's faith, um, which is why he's so strongly against that interpretation of the, of, of the Ramban. But excellent point. Yes, I believe next was Mark and then an old <laughs> Miriam. So how should we take everything that we've learned tonight and apply it when we say bedtime Shema? Okay, right. <laughs> so we take them all to our children. So we should say that the way in which God had, uh, what I have in mind is that the way uh, that when Yaakov said it, right? So Yaakov also had many had many interactions with the angels. So he's so then why did he not say just God protect you? Why does he say Hamalacha Gwelati? Because there's, as we mentioned before, by Shmo, there's different ways that God can interact with man, even when he is using the angels, right? There's the angel who's, you know, doing it simply because he has to, and there's the angel who's doing it out of being, being as in like the sense where God is as close to you as he can be when doing so. But we're blessing our children is that they should be protected by God by means of the angel, and this is in the in the best, most fullest sense of God being close to them, not in the detached i am you know doing so to fulfill the covenant with our forefathers but actually because god is slowly but surely forming a a 
connection and relationship with our children as well. Yes, Miriam. What about the concept of Eliyahu Hanavi coming to the Seder or where we have Eliyahu appear in stories in, in the Gemara, like as though somebody who no longer is alive, though he, I guess, formally didn't die, comes and appears before people. Is that angelic as well? Is that also vision? What, how are we supposed to perceive? Or is it just a fable? It's sweet and move on. It's a good question. I don't have a good answer. Okay. Right? Because then what exactly does that mean? Did, did he become an angel? Was he always an angel? It, it, it's, yeah, I don't, I don't have good clarity on that one either. So sometimes it appears, like, yeah, I just, I'm not entirely sure what to make of that. Especially when it's, you know, when it comes in and out of, ex when he ebbs in and out of existence, it's, it's very confusing. Um, as in, when you say, let's say, the end of days when he's, you know, part of the herald for, you know, for Mashiach, so that one makes more sense. It's like, fine, the world is, you know, reaching a new stage and, and rules are breaking, you know, the dead come back to life, etc. So it's like, sure, why not? But when it's in the, you know, standard, you know, matter of course, I, 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 as in like, for that, it would be easier to say that that if, if Eliyahu is act, interacting the way that the Rambam says in the spiritual plane, it would work much better. But I just because like a lot of the times, like it's just very confusing. So, so then, uh, so some, right. So I guess I am a little bit uh, both using both Rambam and Ramban, depending on, because there's in like, there ha due to the lack of, you know, perception of, you know, of Eliyahu and Avi, it's hard to say whether or not he physically currently has popped in and out of existence or not and how, because it just doesn't, it, if he's really at every, at every single bris, it's like, well, physically that doesn't make sense. But if you say that, you know, in the spiritual sense, then of course, then it makes more sense. So yes, uh, Sandy. Mm -hmm. So. Giving hello to my mother. Uh. Sorry. <laughs> so, so I, I. Sorry. I suppose uh, when you, uh, in, in future, when you call somebody, uh, they're such an angel. You may not. Uh, <laughs> you may not have the same vision in place as someone else might have. Correct, and that's fine. You don't have to have the same vision of an angel. Just remember that, like that, angels are extensions of God. Okay, so I'll see everybody. Remember, so that we're on break. Next, we're on break next week because of two Shvat. We will continue in two weeks. With Thank you so much. It was a wonderful Thank session. You. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure, everybody. Take care.